Time now for an in-depth look at the market news this afternoon, and for that, I'm joined on the line by Dr. Kim Sewan, Professor of Economics at Ihua Women's University. Professor Kim, good afternoon. Thanks for coming on. Good afternoon, Devin. Well, now that Joe Biden is president of the United States, we're going to start to see his economic policies take shape. Some are already talking about Bidenomics. It's not quite clear yet what that means, but it seems that under his policies, we can look forward to an increase in Korea's exports and economic growth. So, Professor, tell us what you can about Biden's policies and what you see happening on that front. U.S. President Biden's new economic policy uh, provides a mixed economic environment to uh, Korean economy in real terms. Uh, first of all, uh, President Biden will uh, implement a massive uh, physical expansion and multilateral trade uh, partnership uh, like a TPP. It is a good news to Korean economy because Korean export to U.S. and other countries uh, increases. Also, in yesterday's confirmation hearing on Treasury Secretary uh, nominee Janet Yellen, uh, she made it clear that uh, U.S. government does not intervene uh, money market, even though U.S. dollar appreciates further. Uh, this is another good news to Korean exports. But uh, Biden's people uh, unanimously sounded a hawkish note on China, calling it by most important strategic competitor. Uh, so U.S. sanction on China will be continued in Biden's administration. Uh, this can be a, a barrier to Korea's uh, export, uh, indirect export to U.S. through uh, China. And let's talk more about that. You say it's, it, that the Biden administration is going to keep up the pressure on China, and of course South Korea, for one, depends on China for a great deal of its trade, about 25 percent. So Korea will be inevitably affected, as you say, by the tensions between those two powers. What does Korea need to do in this situation? Uh, China's uh, export to U.S. will be limited under uh, Mr. Biden's administration because uh, it is highly expected that uh, uh, Biden's government will try to control Beijing uh, with uh, more sophisticated and well-organized uh, measures uh, compared to uh, Trump's administration. Uh, this means that uh, Korean export uh, particularly intermediate goods export to China is also limited due to this uh, situation. So even though it takes longer time, uh, Korea should be expanding its export opportunities in ASEAN region and uh, South American region. Uh, this approach also coincides with uh, uh, President Moon's new southern policy, which promotes economic relations with uh, ASEAN member uh, countries. Right, that has already been a major part of South Korean government policy. Now, turning to the stock market, Wall Street overnight saw big gains with uh, Joe Biden's inauguration, all three main indices rising to new highs. What's the story in the global markets? U.S. market is rising, rising quickly uh, the day before yesterday with uh, new president's inauguration and hopes on U.S. economic recovery. Uh, Dow Jones industry uh, increased by 0.8 percent, and Nasdaq also increased by 2 percent in yesterday's market. Uh, this uh, positive market wave spread out to all other markets in Asia and Europe. So uh, Tokyo's Nikkei increased by 0.8 percent, and London's FTSE also increased by 0.4 percent yesterday. Korean stocks today getting a boost as well and coming, coming off of a big rise the day before as well. So what's happening in the local market? Domestic market had a great rise today too. Uh, this rise is also, I think, affected by U.S. market's uh, movements. Uh, cost being increased by 1.5 percent and cost are also gained by 0.4 percent today. In both of cost and cost down markets, uh, domestic investors of individuals and institutions sold stocks, but foreign investors bought Korean stocks. Well, let's zoom out and look at a, at a macro issue here. Economists at the Bank of Korea have studied the country's trend rate of economic growth, that is, its sustainable rate of economic growth. And for the last decade, the 2010s, they found that it 
fell to the 2% range because of declining productivity and investment. Back in the 1980s, uh, it was around, in the boom years, it was around 8%. Tell us more about that and what do you think the prospects are for a recovery? The downtrend of uh, per capita real GDP or income is something well known to many economists from early 2000s. Uh, it represents Korean economies declining labor productivity and international competitiveness. Actually, until 1980s, uh, Korean per capita GDP growth used to be 7.7 percent, but that became a uh, 2 percent level uh, from 2010. Uh, this problem is related to quite a few structural factors like out-of-dated industry structure like we are too much focusing on uh, manufacturing and not efficient uh, social and economic system. Uh, there are not many things we can do about this in the short run, but in the long run, uh, we need to pursue uh, industry reconstruction as President Moon's Korean New Deal uh, policy suggests. All right, Professor, got that uh, loud and clear. Um, we'll have to leave it there for today, though. Thanks so much for sharing your insights with us. Thank you very much.